Hey guys, what's happening? Just got back for a, a drive in the Bronx right there and started driving kind of funny this morning. It's kind of like my daily driver. I don't really take that. I mean, I don't really drive my white truck that much, F-250, because it's diesel and those aren't really good for stop and go driving. So my around the town car is uh, that early Bronco there, 1966. But the uh, the caliper, I don't know what's going on with it. The brakes or caliper, something's locked up. It feels like it's dragging. It's pulling to the right when I, when I hit a brake. It's pulling that direction. Um, so, yeah, this, I mean, I, think, I, did, I guess I did the disc brake conversion probably about 10 years ago. And I also, I also see that puddle down there. I thought, I mean, originally I thought that was possibly gear oil here. Um, so I, I don't always, <laughs> you guys are new to my channel, and, you know, I, 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 this is actually a, fit, a repair shop. Um, it's not repair, it's called Fintech Repair Shop because I fix things, not just 3D printers and stuff and CNC stuff. I do actually fix, uh, different things. How can I make, my high-tech videos don't get any views, but, I mean, the Bronco video is probably not going to get any views, but I'm going to use my gauge here to see what temp we're at here at the caliper. I can't even see that. So 40, let's try that again. 91 degrees. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be Celsius. It should be Fahrenheit as far as I know. Let's try the other one. So I'm measuring the temperature of the calipers to see if one's locked up or not. Let's try this one. 162, if you can see that. One, plus I can smell on this side too. Yeah, I just replaced these brake pads maybe six months ago. So, definitely feel like it's locked on this side, but last time, I mean, a caliper is a, a caliper is a really simple thing. It's, you know, you're not dealing with a, I mean, basically it's just a piston that goes up and down. It's, it's like a hydraulic piston. So you add fluid to it and it pushes out on it. So, um, what I might do is, well, I mean, the, the rotors themselves feel pretty okay, but I, if I want if I had to, I could turn them on my big lathe here. Um, hook up the, what's it called, the uh, rotor to this thing and just turn it if I had to. But it feels pretty good. I mean, who knows, because I kind of overheated it. That's typically when you'd warp it. So, got to take that tire off. I'm going to obviously let it cool. Probably do end up doing this weekend or tomorrow. Um, I got to I gotta work right now, so. Um, hmm. Yeah, I hope I didn't blow up my new, my new brake pad. So, typically brake pads on this car last for like three to four years. Sometimes five years, depending if I'm up in the Big Bear a lot or not, on the mountains. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna just basically pull the copper off and I'm gonna I'm try to unstick it. You know, basically move it back and forth, actuate it, but I'll show you that when I get to it. Yeah, I forgot to say that this actually runs the, um, the Blazer calipers, I believe. I mean, I bought it from Horsepower Sales from eBay, like I said, over 10 years ago. So worst case scenario, I just gotta buy a caliper for like a Chevy Blazer, so. You know, I'm starting to think that this thing is not even activating this caliper. Just because it's so cold, you know, it's not even. I mean, I just got them driving it. And. Um, let's try the other one. Yeah, the fact that, you know, it spins so freely and it's not even hot at all. All right, so the front right one's definitely locked up. Take a look. There should be, I mean, there should be some resistance, but not that much. So that thing's locked up. Yeah, that's what I felt like. I felt like I'm just driving with a bunch of resistance. So. Alright, so I have it on jack stands. So if you're new to my channel, well, I haven't seen my Bronco yet. We're running a Willwood uh, Master Cylinder. I'm just getting kind of corroded here, but a uh, Hyder Boost. Yeah, this thing is definitely locked up. So, yeah, really hard to spin. All right, so I serviced this thing probably six months ago, probably. But 
the issue is it's supposed to retract. So when you hit the brakes, the piston goes out, and then when you let go of the brakes, it's supposed to retract so it disengages the brake pad. But it's totally locked up here. Also another thing I noticed too, see this rubbish. It's not like on the other side, so I gotta figure out how, why this thing's rubbing on my tire. That's something good, you know? <laughs> it's weird, so maybe I can bend that back or something. Push it further back so it's not so angled here. But it's actually, I don't really have any room to move because of that distribution uh, block right there. Alright, so, um, right, I'm gonna get my, I don't know if this is Torx or Allen. I think Allen. Um, yeah, he's a grease, I can still feel the grease on it when I grease it up, so. Alright, I'm gonna take the caliper off. Two, two screws on this one. Like I said, it's a Chevy conversion, the Blazer conversion. So it's off a 76 Blazer. Alright, so, let me just push this thing back. It's so stuck on the piston that, I wanna see if I can get that piston back a little bit so it's easier to take off this thing here. Yeah, it feels really stuck. So it's either debris in there or it's bound up sideways or something. I'm not sure of the piston. I mean, this is not a complicated system. It's, I mean, just basically a hydraulic piston. I can't push it back with the seat clamp, so I'm just going to pound it out. One of the bushings came out of here. Okay. Those are kind of getting worn out too. They replace those. Okay, so here's your typical disc brake tool. Because these are truck brakes, they don't typically fit in there. I mean, this is good for like a small car, but. All right. So I need to see if I can get this thing to move. Um, I'm trying to look if it's kind of like bound sideways, maybe. Like if it, if it goes sideways like that, you know, if it doesn't go flat and kind of go sideways, it'll bind up. Um, how do I? I don't know if that seal is pounded in there. It's held in by like a retaining clip. All right, this thing is crazy bound up. I can't even get it back with the C clamp. So um, I'm gonna try to push the uh, thing out. So by hitting the brake pedal and there's no brake pads in the way, it should just pop all the way out. Well, I might just. I want to see if I can just get it to move, and then if that doesn't work, then I gotta go maybe grab this with vice grips. Um, not vice grips, but a channel locks, and then see if I can spin it back and forth a little bit. Maybe lube it up the seal. Alright, so the seal looks like again good tech, so I don't wanna rip I don't wanna rip the seal up with a dry. So I'm just gonna hit it with some W40. Put a lube in there, soften up just a little bit. Yeah, the reason why I don't think it's the proportioning valve, um, just because one controls the back, one controls the front. Um, but they both share the same distribution block in there. So it would be equally applying pressure on both sides. So um, that's why I don't think it's it's different on both sides. So, um, all right, this thing's kind of a pain in the butt. All right, so I turned the car on, just pumped it, I put a thing down there to catch as much as I can the brake fluid. All right, that's the piston. I'm gonna go back through there, and obviously now I got to bleed the brakes, but that's there must be something that rust or debris or something in there. So, like I said, pretty simple. I mean, it's really just a couple of seals. Um, so I'm empty that out. I'm gonna grab some paper towels and just clean all the inside of that out and look at the, all the uh, stuff with light. And then I'm gonna go back, clean this up, buff it out on my buffer, and we'll uh, take a look at it. So here's a closer look on my workbench here under the light. So any little piece of debris can cause that thing to lock up. You know, it'll make it bind sideways. So. All right, I might get that nice and cleaned up. I guess I'll use some brake clean or degreaser or something. Right here, but that's, this is gonna be the first phase. Well, I just got the degreased. You can still see some pitting there. So first, I'm going to hit it with my wire, wire wheel bench grinder. Then I go back to my uh, polishing cloth here. Eh, a little bit of pitting. But it's really the insides. It really matters right here where the seal goes against it. All right, so that's what's left of the debris. I even drained it. Yeah, my light doesn't work. There it goes. See there, right there. I don't know if you can see that. Um. Yeah, I'm sure that debris is binding the thing up. So I'm gonna look at the seal. Um. I can't remember the. I mean, I don't think I've. 
maybe five years ago, maybe. I kind of did a little kind of basic flush on the system. But, yeah, I'm going to get my little paper towel and clean that all up in there. And Because I'm probably not going to be able to get all the debris. I'm going to probably just blow out my compressor. Like, once I get as much of the debris out of the towel as I can, then I'll come back with my compressor and blow it all out. Maybe get some of the fine stuff. Um, if your wins were wondering how simple this thing really is, Basically, you have one seal in there, and that basically seals all the fluid. That little rubber O-ring right there, if you can see it. Um, right there. That's it. And that thing is just, this is just to prevent dust from getting in there and getting to that seal. Um, so you don't tear up the inner seal. It's like the outer dust seal. And then all the fluid comes from that little hole back there. And it just, it's hydraulic. It just basically pushes against that piston and pushes it out. So very, very basic system. That's why I wasn't like all stressed about it. You know, it's just a piston and that's it. You want this to be totally clear debris or anything, anything sharp, like rust or pitting as much as you can because you don't want to tear the inner seal out while you're trying to put this back in. Because if you do that, then you're gonna have a leak. So I'm just gonna lube it up with my dot four fluid here. You know, like, because the only kind of lubrication this thing gets is brake fluid. So I lubricate the outside of the piston with it. I forgot how much of a headache the uh, holding that seal is up to get it past the piston again. We like the main seal. I'll show it to you. So I'm putting out like a little tool adapter to make it easier. Yeah, just a, it's just basically, you'll see, it's like a little circle. So if you're new to my channel, I, uh, I mess around with 3D printers and CNC machines, fix them, design them. Alright, here I go. All right, so let me share the concept of this real fast, now I can get it in there. So hopefully hope, hold the seal open. I'll get it on there. Let me slide the piston through without binding up on the seal. All right, so that little plastic thing is holding the seal up because if that seal's down, you can't get the piston in there. It wants to bind up. So that little plastic ring hopefully should allow me to just slide this piston through like that. Can't, I don't want to do this with one hand, but I think you guys get the idea here. So I can slide it through the ring and get it inside there. I gotta really re lube it up again though. If you can see this here. So got the thing in here. Well it's this the the, the seal the seal's being held open. So I hope I can push it back in now without too much binding. So now that I have that piston back in there, I can just take the thing off here. The little, the little adapter piece back in there. And there's a little ridge in there that this thing's supposed to get into. Make sure I get that in there first before it goes too far back. All right, now that I have it all clean and polished, it, it was able to push back We're nice and easily. No binding, no locking up. So, yeah, I wish I did, it's probably just some debris in there that was causing it to bind like sideways or something like that, you know? Um, all right, I'm gonna put this back together and. Uh, brake pads on and do it we'll do a test so before you do this you should have the piston all the way over to the very back that way you're minimizing the amount of air in here I'm gonna need the bleeder just to get some air out first with the piston all the way back so you're not having to push out a lot of uh, air hi right, guys hope you got a success here I think the caliber needs to be worked out a little bit but it's not locked up anymore it still has some resistance in there See. Yeah. That one does seem to spin more freely, but this one's not locked up anymore. So tomorrow what I'm going to do is um, measure the temp again tomorrow, and then, but at least it's not locked up anymore, so. Alright, so that's how I did it. So, you have a stuck caliper, um, that's how I freed it, clean it up. Yeah, I actually what's funny, I'm really in tune to this truck because it's my daily driver for, for the last 20 years. So I'm really familiar how it feels like when there's, when there's a problem or something wrong with it. So, Alright guys, so it's got back to my first drive. Been a couple days. Um, so now there's a 4 degree difference between the two. So it's no longer pulling and it seems to be unlocked. So, right, so now, now i got to figure out why it's like on the front axle here. Axle seal. It's the original Dana 30. But, um... Alright, yeah, I never actually, I mean, I know a lot of people upgraded the Dana 44s, but 
I never had a problem with Dana 30. So, I mean, I don't go crazy wheeling, though. Yeah, I just go cruising around. Um, you know, just trails. I mean, I've done some pretty good... Not, I'm going to test some rocks, but not crazy rocks. All right, cool. Uh, that's it. Pretty pretty basic. So, um, like I said, it's a simple simple thing. You know, just a piss in and in a, some fluid. So, all right. So, uh, I mean, I could spend thirty dollars and re reseal it, or not. I, I, well, to get like a remanufactured one, it's like thirty or forty bucks, and then you get like a seal kit, you know, for like like three or four dollars. So, eventually, what I might do that, I might go back and just reseal them. You know, go back and replace all the seals, but. Alright, cool. Pretty basic. <laughs>